in this we are going to have one master node and one slave node okay because this cluster we are not going to use it for our lab okay here our intention is to just to show you how i'm going to manually bring up the master server okay in the master server i'll be config configuring the kubernetes api server and the etcd cluster okay the scheduler and cube control manager uses the default configuration as the api server so i'm not going to configure that okay and docker it will be just running on the master so in the out of the four services i'm going to manually configuring the api server etcd cluster okay and then cube scheduler and the cube control manager are going to use the same configuration as the api server so i'm not going to modify that okay so i will bring up a master in the master i will be configuring the flannel network daemon okay and in the node i will be installing kubelet cube proxy and flannel and i will be configuring them to point to my master so this way you can understand how the components are individually installed and what are all the configuration files you should touch to manage the cluster so this is what our complete intention here So everyone connected to the master? Yes, we did. Okay. So I'm going to do lots of package installation. So let me just switch the user as a sudo user. So give the command sudo su. And the next command I'm going to do is I'm going to do a update. So the command is m update hyphen y. This may have a lots of update pending, so let me install it. So m update iPhone and y let it run. So let's name that machine because here after we are going to basically I'm going to set a host name for the machine. So the command is host name ctl set hyphen host name we call it as master dot ending dot com and then execute the bash shell again to update the host name i'm going to install the kubernetes related components so here so the command i'm going to use is yum install so when i install kubernetes it is going to install all the dependent packages for me like kubernetes needs docker to execute so it will install docker it will install the api api scheduler it will install the uh, your um, control manager it will install the kubelet client all those things it will install so i need to install kubernetes and also i'm going to install the etcd so the command is yum call kubernetes then etcd. I told that it needs etcd cluster to do that. I'm sorry, kubernetes spelling mistake. So my that now the components are getting installed. Okay, first let me configure the etcd configuration file. Okay, so the etcd configuration file will be available in the slash etc etcd etcd dot conf. This is the location of the default location of the etcd configuration file. then i'm going to ensure i have a couple of entries in the correct manner okay so the first thing i'm going to check it whether i have a proper etcd data directory so etcd i told it's a nosql database right so it should be storing the data which location i want this data to be stored so by default it will be storing in the bare lib etcd default.etcd 
So this is where the directory is going to store. Well done, fine. I'm not going to make any changes there. And next is what is the name of the etcd database? I'm going to call it as default. This is also fine. Okay. And in the listen client URLs, I'm going to name it as 0 0.0.0.0. That means any parameter. So uh, like in uh, Linux networking configuration. Okay. So when you listen, when you Whenever you configure a network parameter or a service to listen on a particular IP, you need to give the actual IP in which I will be calling the service. Okay. But if I provide 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0, it will be uh, any IP. If I call it, the service is going to respond to it. This is called service mapping with the network interface. If I put 0 from any IP, I can call it is going to respond. If I name it like localhost, only when I call this etcd as localhost, then only it will respond. That is where I'm changing it to the 0, .0, 0.0.0. Okay. And in the advertised client URL also, let me change it. So the value I'm changing is under etcd listen client URLs. etcd data directory is fine. I'm not changing it. And in the listen client URL, I'm changing the IP to 0, .0, .0. And etcd name, no changes. And in the etcd advertise client URL, let me change it to 0 .0 .0 .0. Okay. so that it can advertise the client URL. So these two lines, I'm changing it to Instead of localhost, I'm changing it to 0, .0, .0, 0 0.0.0.0. These are all the changes I'm going to do it in the etcd configuration, where I'm saying my etcd should be listening on the machine on the port number 2379. 2379 is the port number for the etcd. Okay. In a real-time scenario, especially when you're having a high availability cluster or something, people will create a etcd cluster. That means uh, two etcd services will be running and that will be mapped with the load balancer and we will be using that load balancer url in the uh, kubernetes configuration part so here it is a single node cluster that means i have only one master node for it in that case the etcd is running on the master node itself the next file i'm going to change is Kubernetes related configuration file. So where exactly these files will be? I'll just show you. So etc Kubernetes. There you can see multiple configuration files. One is your API server. Okay. This is where all your API server related configurations will be given. And control manager, this is the control manager configuration file. And config is the general config file for your cluster. Okay. And then Kubelet, uh, uh, this is a master machine, so I'm not going to keep Kubelet here. If you want to configure Kubelet, you can also do it. Then your scheduler and proxy configuration files. So all these files you will see under etcd Kubernetes. Here, I'm going to edit the API server. So let me edit the API server, etc Kubernetes API server. I am going to configure Kubernetes API address to my bind address should be 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0. So I wanted to listen on the network interface without any IP restriction. And next is I'm going to uncomment the cube API port. So let me uncomment the cube API port. It should be port 8080 and kubelet port also. Let me uncomment it. And the etcp server, the same configuration, no changes to it. And kube service address. So this is where, so when I create a Kubernetes cluster, it is going to 
create the separate network for the cluster so what should be the ip address i should be using for it so imagine if your organization is having a 10.0 series ip okay we should be very careful in choosing this ip range because in our server we are using 172 series private ip so we are not worried about the 10.0 series but in your organization if you are using 10.0 series you should allocate a ip range which is not pre allocated so you should be very careful this is the range that will be given for the containers which are coming in the kubernetes cluster so this is the ip range so here we are using 10.0 series we are good here and then no changes to the other things okay other files i'm not going to modify i will just show you okay so there will be a file called config it basically talks about what is my kubernetes server where it is running so my master is running on this machine only so we are good and uh, control manager so it will not have any default configuration you can see that these are all the arguments if you want to add and there will be kubelet here i'm not going to make any changes to the kubelet because this is going to act as a master in master i don't need kubelet okay this is the other one and the proxy you can see the proxy configurations here okay if you want to give anything you can give there but i am going to use the default configuration so next scheduler also it will be the same thing so these are only the configure configuration file which you need to touch if you want any customization on the service you can provide them here okay so almost my master is ready in the master i have installed etcd and kubernetes and i have modified the configuration file for etcd and api server so let me start these services okay so i'm going to give system ctl start etcd okay first i'm going to start system ctl system ctl start etcd and then let me well etcd and let me also check the status so it is active and running first i am starting the etcd then i am enabling it so whenever the server got restarted i want this to started automatically that's what i'm doing it with the enable so like the same way i'm going to start the cube api server cube hyphen api server and i'm going to check the status and let me enable the cube api server Folder. Check the status of it. Yes, running. So. you need to have four services in the running state first is your etcd and then you have to start your api server and then cube control manager and then the cube scheduler next i'm going to write a entry in my etcd database okay where i'm going to say my flannel uh, flannel d uh, sorry flannel network daemon should use the docker network to connect to the containers so we have seen in the default docker so there is a uh, when i install docker it is going to create a service called uh, sorry it's going to create a network called 172.17.0.0/16 so on our mission whenever i have the 
um, default uh, Docker installation 172.17.0.16 is going to be the uh, 0.0/16 is going to be the Docker network. So I want my Flannel uh, network to connect to that uh, uh, using that network. So for that, I'm going to make a entry in the etcd. So this is the command to make the entry. So this entry, it is going to make it in the etcd database. So run this command in the master and this will make an entry for flannel to connect and get the information. Once it is done, run the command ipa. So this will print the IP address of the machine. You will see a 172 series IP. Okay, This is the internal IP of my machine in Amazon. So my node will be using this IP address to connect to the master. Just copy this IP address. After making the entry in the etcd, run the command IPA. This will print the IP address of the machine. And let's get the IP onto a notepad. So let me store it on a notepad because in my client node, I'm going to use this IP to connect to the master. Okay. Before moving on to the client machine, I'm going to run the kubectl command to see whether is there any node available on the cluster. Okay. So the command is kubectl get nodes. It is going to say no resource found. That means no class in the cluster no nodes are available because we haven't configured any kubelet till now so my master configuration is done and node let's do sudo su and yum install but yum update hyphen y so i want to get the latest os update So coming back to the PPT. So in the node, we are going to install the flannel and kubelet. And while installing Kubernetes itself, it is going to install the kubelet. So I'm going to install flannel and kubelet here. So it will be, the command will be, oh. Prior to that, let me just set up the host name for it. So the command is host name CTL set hyphen host name dot training dot com exec bash host. CC bash so next I'm going to give I'm going to install flannel and Kubernetes so run all F Panel and Kubernetes hyphen Y. So let me install them. So let me install all the dependent packages. Now I am going to in my flannel.configuration, I'm going to tell where exactly it should get the etcd information. I have added etcd information, right? There, 
I need to tell Flannel you should use this as a etcd uh, server. So let's do that. The Flannel configuration will be under etc sysconfig. Flannel D. That in this file, you are going to in the flannel etcd endpoint give the private IP address which you copied from the master. Right? So instead of this 127. Just paste the IP address. Okay. So in the flannel configuration file, I'm saying this is this should be your ETCD endpoint. And from there, you should get the network information with the topic atomic.io slash network. And this is what I have added in the master. You see, atomic.io network config. You should use this network so this is where i'm going to tell the flannel you should get the information from this etcd server and you have to use it so let me save this file so once this entry is done i'm going to modify the Kubernetes config. So this is the file which is going to talk about what is my master server. So edit this file. And there in the Kubernetes master, change it to instead of 127. Change this line to your master IP. So in the Kubernetes config, change this line to your master IP. And the next file I'm going to modify is the kubelet configuration because in the node, the primary is kubelet. So let's modify that. So you can see Kubernetes kubelet. Kubelet, I'm going to modify the kubelet should be listening on all the interfaces. So I'm going to change this 127 to 0 .0 .0 .0 .0. and let me uncomment the kubelet port. And in the kubelet host name, let me name it as node.training.com. This is just the name it will display when I try to list the hosts which are connected to the master. And in the Kubernetes API server, I'm going to provide the IP address of my master. So in the kubelet, let me repeat. So I'm changing the interface to listen on all the interfaces and I should uncomment the port. And in the host name, I'm changing it to node.training.com. And then in the kubelet API server, I'm giving the 
I be of the master. So let us save this. Share the file. For it. So my changes are done. So I have configured the flannel. I have configured my cube config. I have defined what is my master server. And in the cubelet, I have provided the information. So here, after that, I need to start my flannel. I need to start my Docker. And I need to start my cubelet. So let me write a small script to do that for service and proxy service in Q proxy Q blood docker and flannel ready do some CTL start order service dollar service status dot service oh shit them in active service so let me share this it's a single command i have written a small shell script which will restart all the services so once you run the command you should get four active running options And if you go to your master and try to get the nodes, you should be able to see the node.training.com in ready state. So that means this server is getting Node mission is connecting to the master via the kubelet. So majorly you need the kubelet for communication. Okay. And then kube proxy for the uh, network. Right. And then flannel D to provide the, provide the all the network configurations. And then uh, your Docker for hosting your containers. All these services should be running. 